Hi friends! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Ace Otero and in today's Pick a Card reading we are going to be looking at why did you come into your person or the person that you are thinking of's life. So this video is actually a collab. I am so excited. This is my first ever collab and there's no better person to do it with than a fellow Aries queen, Miss Kino Otero herself. Um, so she is actually going to be doing the exact opposite. She's going to be looking at why your person came into your life. So it's essentially the same reading flip-flop, but I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how our readings line up with one another. We haven't told each other about anything at all that we're doing. We just came up with the topics and then went from there. So um, after you watch this video or before, if you're more interested in that, definitely go check out her channel. She's a wonderful reader. I will have it linked in the description. Um, and definitely check out her music too because she's just wonderful on so many different levels. Um, but for my reading today, we have four piles. We have pile one with this Rhodochrosite seahorse. We have pile two with this black obsidian Winnie the Pooh. We have pile three with this bloodstone snake and we have pile four with this fluorite deer. So go ahead and pause the video if you need to, to decide which pile you feel most drawn to. It's absolutely okay to be drawn to more than one. It's possible one pile may be for you, one may not be. You could be asking about multiple different people or there could be this different answers that you need in different piles. Just do what feels right to you. Remember to listen to your gut first and foremost and take what resonates and throw the rest in the garbage. So I will meet you over in your reading. I will have all the timestamps listed in the description and in the comments section. So once you've found your pile, you can go ahead and find those and we will get into your reading. Hi there, pile one. Thank you so much for being here. If you chose the Rhodochrosite seahorse, this is going to be your reading on why did you come into your person's life or the person that you're thinking of. So to help you guys know if this is your reading or not, I'm first going to be looking at this connection as a whole. So if this sounds like somebody that you know, if you're able to identify yourself and somebody that you know in here, then this reading is definitely for you. If it doesn't sound like somebody you know, this might be someone in your future or it may not be the reading for you. So feel free to check out a different pile if you feel like the description in the beginning doesn't sound like you. I do this typically to help you figure out if this is your reading or not so you don't have to sit through the entire reading. So let's just go ahead and start at the connecting energies. So the connecting energy between you and this person is represented first by the rebirth card this is the earth star chakra so this is a chakra below the root chakra so quite grounding and then we also have this card of release and now i'm going to go into the two different people in this connection so you should be able to pick out yourself and your person. If it sounds like there's qualities of both you and your person in both of these, don't freak out because it's quite possible that, you know, the energies are just mixed. But to start, the first person is being represented by the Phoenix, Jupiter, and Leo. And what I do want to say, especially about astrology placements, is that this person does not have to have these astrology placements. Um, it's just kind of extra confirmation. But the other person is being represented by the lizard, Taurus, and illusion. Okay. So let's talk about the first person in this connection as they're being represented by the phoenix. So this card doesn't actually represent an element, it represents uh, a chakra. So this actually represents the, the root chakra. And the phoenix card is all about, you know, rising above challenges, overcoming challenges. And what I find really interesting is that uh, this phoenix person definitely is feeling a lot more confident. Whoever this person is, they could be a Sagittarius or a Leo um, with all the fire also in Aries. So all the fire signs, they could be a fire sign. Um, certainly don't have to be, but it seems like this person has gone through a rebirth recently where they've really overcome a lot of struggles that 
have really been bringing them down. With this Leo card here, this person doesn't have to be a Leo, but I do think that they are in this energy of feeling almost like on top of the world or like they're actually in control of their own life. Um, I feel like they're probably prioritizing self-care or what works best for them. They really are kind of in this energy of releasing karma, which makes sense now looking at the release card. <laughs> um, but not only that, it, it's like they're entering a new phase in their life where they feel new again and they feel ready to take on life, to take on new challenges, um, to just see what the world has for them. It's like they're coming out of hiding almost. And with this Jupiter card here, I definitely feel like there's a lot of blessings coming into coming to this person as of right now. Or maybe this person is just kind of like naturally lucky. It definitely seems like the first person in this connection has been going through a transformation for a little while now. And what it definitely seems like is the phoenix and the lizard are likely not together in a room. Well, they could be. I take that back. They actually could be. Let me look at the lizard first and then we'll get back to that. So this lizard person is also being represented by fire, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, as well as Taurus. So they could have those placements, but they certainly don't have to. With this lizard card here, the lizard card talks about somebody who pretty much usually already has a sixth sense. Um, and there's somebody who actually needs to retreat often. Uh, they need to go back into their cave and kind of gather their energy because they can be very sensitive. So one thing that I'm seeing here, interestingly, is that it seems like there is a tendency for this lizard person to come across as I'm hearing cold or disinterested when it's not actually the case. It's more so that this lizard person needs lots of time to retreat and to kind of go within. So with this illusion card here, I feel like um, the lizard person's actions get misconstrued a lot. Um, this lizard person might be pretty stubborn or uh, they may enjoy the finer things in life. They uh, Taurus is ruled by Venus, so they could be um, very interested in like interior design or uh, fashion or something like that. We certainly don't have to be, but what it seems here is that um, the Phoenix person and the lizard person definitely have history. So if this is a new person, this probably isn't your pile. The fact that we have rebirth and release, um, it definitely seems like this is either a connection that is still occurring or um, one that has created transformation in both parties. With this release here, it does kind of seem like these two have decided to either release the connection or release the need to know more about the connection or the need to hold on to the connection in some way. It's really fascinating. It's almost kind of like these two decided to detach from this connection or maybe one decided to detach and the other was fine with it because of you know, whatever, um, whatever may be going on, you know, they're just like, okay, whatever, that's fine. Um, it kind of seems like there is a willful release on both ends so that both parties can focus on their own transformations in the 3D world. There's a lot here about the 3D world. And what's interesting, um, is the Phoenix person definitely feels like they have more of a masculine energy. Um, Jupiter can often be represented by a fatherly figure. So this person could be a father of some kind, an animal father, a human father, a plant father, something like that. They don't have to be, but it does seem like they have some heavy masculine energy and they're kind of learning how to stand in their own power and rule uh, in their own life. Whereas the lizard kind of seems to be in more of a um, hermit mode. It seems like the phoenix is coming out of a hermit mode and ready to kind of attack life again. Whereas the lizard is kind of in a hermit mode right now healing. So I definitely think that if you picked pile one, this connection that you're asking about, um, it seems like whether you're in contact with this person or not, you both have been going through tons of transformations and I've been releasing things no longer serving you. You could honestly be with this person and this could just be talking about 
a rebirth within your connection where um, maybe you were going through a rough time or you had to release uh, blockages in your connection that were maybe causing you both to argue or not get along. But what it seems like here is that no matter which person you are, um, this connection has already brought about a lot of transformation and a lot of change. So I'm definitely excited to see what comes up in the tarot about why you came into this person's life, whether you're the phoenix or the lizard. And like I said, if it sounds like you're a phoenix lizard, uh, don't stress about that because it's likely there are similar things going on on both ends. So let's go ahead and look now and see why you came into this person's life. So I am going to be shuffling the tarot on camera. This is the Enchanted Love Tarot. We are just going to be seeing why you came into this person's life. And then after this, we will look at messages from your person using the Lover's Oracle deck and what Spirit wants you to know, advice, and what might be shifting for the two of you. Because I do feel like there's a lot of different scenarios for this connection, um, but nonetheless, very fascinating. So I'm definitely intrigued to see who is the lizard and who is the phoenix, or if you're both phoenix lizards. Okay, but let's go ahead and start and ask Spirit, why did Pile 1 come into their person's life? Why did Pile 1 come into their person's life? Okay. All right, we have the King of Cups. We have the Nine of Cups. We have the Queen of Wands. You know what I just heard, Ace of Wands, uh, that vine, what is it? Um, it, I think it's the same girl that, that did the Miss Keisha vine, but it's not like, oh my, oh my God, she dead. It's the other one. She's like, I'm a bad bitch. You can't kill me. <laughs> and it kind of seems like the energy that you both are in, interestingly enough, like you both are, um, Okay, so we have the Three of Swords. In the back of the deck, we have Judgment, and now we're gonna get clarifiers for all of these. Actually, no, let's just start here. Because I definitely think Spirit, oh my God, Spirit, go off. This makes so much sense already. So, one of you could be a fire sign and the other could be a water sign. Certainly doesn't have to be, but we have the King of Cups and the Nine of Cups. So I feel like one person in this connection um, definitely has been more focused on their own fulfillment, whereas the other person has been driven by their passion and has kind of always taken the lead in this connection. And I'm definitely not surprised that there's been a rebirth within this connection because it's inherently obvious that something went down here with this Three of Swords and Judgment. Um, it definitely seems like you coming in to this person's life was really important, especially for this person's emotional maturity. Um, when it comes to the King of Cups, I definitely feel like this connection was meant to help this person develop emotionally and understand what makes them feel truly fulfilled. I definitely feel like this person had to lose you in some way. I kind of get the vibe that the viewer watching is um, the Queen of Wands, but it certainly doesn't have to be. It could be vice versa. Um... But I think either you or this person has had to learn how to take the lead in their own life. And it's possible maybe you needed to learn how to take charge in a situation um, or release the need to take charge of a situation in some way. Actually, I'm gonna get clarifiers first because I'm mixing it up and I have to remember <laughs> that I'm not doing um, 
why your person came into your life, but why you came into your person's life. Um, maybe this person is a bit of a control freak, and so you taking the lead in this connection is a bit different. But I want to get clarifiers for all of these. So the King of Cups. Okay, so the Two of Wands. Clarify the Nine of Cups for me, please, Spirit. Okay. Wow, okay, we have the Empress and the Wheel of Fortune coming up under the Nine of Cups. I might be lying. This, this, uh, you might be the Empress, not the Queen of Wands, but you might be both, actually. Make sure. Okay, so, Spirit. So, clarifying the Three of Swords is the King of Swords. All right, yeah, this is already making a lot of sense. Okay, um take these back with judgment clarifying judgment is the six of swords and clarify the queen of wands for me spirit the ten of pentacles and on the back of the deck is the knight of cups so why did you come into this person's life pile one you came into this person's life because first of all y'all have a romantic connection y'all are into each other and i definitely think that this connection was divinely guided in some way shape or form i feel like you are very important to this person changing their point of view I feel like you met this person when they were at a crossroads in life and maybe you were at a crossroads too. And it, it kind of just feels like this energy of like right person, wrong time, so to speak. And I think that there's something important mutual here where um, I think you and this person immediately recognized that there was something more, but it's possible that either both of you were not ready for something deeper or um, one of you wasn't. I feel like if it was only one of you, it was the person that you're asking about because it definitely seems like this person knew that they were really lucky to know you. I feel like they see you as the empress. It doesn't matter what gender you are, but I feel like they just saw you as the total package. And they realized that maybe they didn't realize in the beginning um, how special you were or how significant this connection could be. Because with this Wheel of Fortune, it, it kind of seems like this person knew that they were um, lucky to know you. But I don't think that they, um, I feel like they maybe took you for granted in the beginning, for sure. Um, maybe this is vice versa. Maybe you took this person for granted. Um, but kind of what I'm seeing here is that somebody, I feel like one of you knew. I feel like it's likely that the person watching right now, you, Pile One, knew that this, there was something more to this connection. But it kind of seems like... Um, your person wasn't really ready um, to move forward with somebody. It definitely seemed like they had turned their emotions off. And I think losing you hurt a lot more than they realized. And maybe not in the very beginning, but I feel like this person had this realization that they were not going to get, they had a realization that the way that they were acting wasn't cool in some way and that their actions have consequences. I'm seeing another vine. Oh my God, this is the vine pile, um, which this isn't technically a vine. It's a YouTube video, but they made it into a vine. Um, that kid screaming about Sonic when he's like, he's like, when will you learn that your actions have consequences? <laughs> which I definitely can't do it uh, the right way. But I definitely feel like this person was kind of in, when you met them, like a knight, knight of wands energy, like very uh, pretty much just interested in physical pleasure and doing what made them happy. It kind of seemed like this person already was dealing with some pain to begin with. And then um, 
maybe they met you, they're still at this crossroads and they just realized that they couldn't really invest in like a romantic connection of some of some type. They were pretty focused on their professional life. It kind of seems like this person knew your value, but they realized that they needed time to figure things out. And in that amount of time, this person may have had a perspective change and realized maybe how unfair they were being, especially if there was a falling out. Um, I feel like you came into this person's life to realize that they can overcome um, their past self and that they don't have to be a victim of their own circumstances because with this queen of wands here clarified by the ten of pentacles i feel like this person one needed to learn that it doesn't matter what their family or the people around them want it matters what they want and i also feel like this person needed to realize that they're growing older or something that i'm hearing and that they're kind of maturing and that um you know, it, it, it's almost like with this crossroads energy, it, it's almost like spirit brought you into this person's life and then took you out, took you away to, to really just make this person reevaluate everything they thought they knew and everything that they were doing. With this judgment card perspective, with the six of swords, I feel like you gave this person the perspective that they can not only heal from the things that have hurt them, but they can actually do more than they ever thought possible and that they're capable of more than they ever thought that they could be. I feel like you inspired this person to want to create their own legacy. And I think that um, if this hasn't happened already, you and this person are kind of due for a rebirth of some kind. Um, with this Knight of Cups, with the ace of wands i definitely think there is not only there's not only a rebirth of physical passion but on top of that romantic feelings and i think that the reason why this is coming back in is because you both have released the issues of the past that maybe you were holding on to if you have forgiven or seen seen things from a higher perspective this person realizes now that it's not worth holding a grudge or it's not worth um shutting somebody out forever um in order shutting some oh, shoot i lost my train of thought i'm so sorry but I, what I'm seeing here is that the reason you came into this person's life was to just knock them on their feet and, and completely change everything that they thought they knew about the world, everything that they thought they wanted, everything that they thought they needed. You came into this person's life and showed them what true fulfillment could look like and it scared the piss out of them. Totally, 100%. They were like, I am not ready for this. And so they might have pushed this away hoping that it wouldn't it wouldn't be that significant even though this person knew deep down that there was something real here this person could see it but i feel like they were more into their um to their swords energy their air energy they weren't really receptive to feelings to romance and so even though their emotional body was telling them like hey let's let's go for this their logical mind was saying, nah, now isn't the time I need to focus on work or I need to do this or I'm not ready for this. And so as a result, I feel like this person lost you in some way. And now they're having this realization that they not only do they need to heal, but that uh, maybe their perspective wasn't entirely accurate. Um, with this Queen of Wands here and this ten of pentacles i feel like you inspired this person to want to create their own legacy and to take take more more charge in their life that's not grammatically correct spirit um but they they realized that they could do more in their life like maybe you're very successful uh, or something like that and i feel like you inspired this person to want to do the same like if you're if you're an entrepreneur that maybe this person always wanted to be one but didn't have like the confidence to do it or something like that and you really showed this person that if you can do it they can do it if that makes sense um, but a lot of the reason why you came into this person's life is because there's a genuine connection here and this person has a lot of feelings for you. Um, this person needed to learn how to kind of heal their own pain and move forward 
and change their perspectives on how they see love and life and other people. I feel like maybe before you came in, this person didn't think it was possible um, for somebody like you to exist, kind of with this Empress energy. And with this Wheel of Fortune here, I feel like this person has had to learn that they have to focus on their own inner happiness if they ever want to experience happiness with another and experience fulfillment and create something new because I do think that this person wants a rebirth here if it hasn't happened for some of you I definitely feel like this rebirth has already happened and you're already talking to this person communicating with this person but I think that, that you came into this person's life to realize just how lucky they are to know you um, and how and, and that kind of flips back onto you, Pile One, where you have to realize how wonderful you are in order for um, your person to see how lucky that they are for you to be in their life. But with this Six of Swords here, I feel like it's kind of mutual in terms of like both of you had to change your perspectives and kind of move forward. Maybe one or both of you even moved away from like the place that you were living or something is like what I'm hearing. Um But yeah, it does kind of seem like you came into this person's life to, to change everything they thought they knew and to um, help them heal, help teach them how to heal, maybe not literally, but indirectly. Um, and also, it's kind of like you were a catalyst for change. You were a catalyst for rebirth and a catalyst to help this person release the things that um, you no longer needed. And what's interesting is that I definitely feel like it's go. It's the same thing for um, your person. Uh, the fact that rebirth and release were the mutual energies between the both of you, I feel like the semantics of what you both experienced were different, but the over overarching overlying or the the overall themes that encompass the reasons as to why you came into this person's life are similar to why this person came into your life, if that makes sense. Because it, it kind of seems like <sighs> you were like killing like 70 birds with one stone for this person. Like the way that this person feels about you is no joke. Um, they ha they feel real like deep romantic feelings for you and they have a lot of passion for you. And this person has had to overcome a lot of pain in order to feel that way again. Um, and I feel like this person needed to realize that like life loses a little bit of its color when the emotional body isn't considered or when things aren't perceived through the emotional body because um this person definitely has always had feelings for you but i think that it was a lot easier for them to suppress them at one point until this person released a lot of things that they had been hurting hurting from and and began to heal then they could finally see things from a different perspective and see maybe the error of their ways or um, the fact that maybe they didn't make always make the right decision in the past or maybe they let go of a good thing because they didn't realize what they had or um, I'm hearing a song. Oh, I'm hearing uh, Take Care by uh, Drake and Rihanna. Um, so yeah, I'm hearing that song like I've loved and I'm, like specifically the part like I've loved and I've lost. It's it's almost like you two had to lose each other in order to realize the lessons that you needed. It's almost like like this I, you might have been like cursing spirit or the universe being like, you know, why would you make me meet this person if it was going to end like this or it was going to happen like this? And, you know, the spirit's kind of like, you know, you're going to learn all the valuable things that you actually need to learn because of this. Um, but you might, you might be, you might already have children or something with this person, or you might be meant to have children with them, to have a family with them. Um, I feel like this, this has heavy, like power couple energy. Like you are this person's equal in a lot of ways. And so they, so the universe sees you both as like viable, viable counterparts, viable, um, yeah, exactly what I said, counterparts. And I think, I think the reason why you came back into this person's life and there, I literally said came back into this person's life because I think that you definitely 
are either in separation with them or experienced a separation with them and now you're kind of like back in one another's lives or have been or will be because there's a lot of romance there's a lot of attraction here especially physical attraction as well as romantic attraction and intellectual like there's a lot of attraction here and I think this person realizes now that you're the whole package and how you kind of are a wish fulfillment for them but it's like they had to lose you in order to realize what they were missing out on it's like they needed that perspective in order to take the lead again and um go after something with you um I want to ask if there's anything else. Spirit, why did Pile 1, why did they come into their person's life? Okay, so we have the devil. So yeah, there's definitely like sexual energy here for sure. Um, Spirit, why did Pile 1 come into their person's life? Uh, signs I'm also seeing uh, air, air, um, air, Aries. <laughs> No, uh, <laughs> Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, as well as Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, uh, Capricorn with the devil. We also have the five of swords, the eight of pentacles and the queen of cups. So yeah, I think that you came into this person's life to really show them what they what they needed to work on, what they needed to heal, to overcome their uh, demons, the things that hold them back, to help them overcome defeat and to help them, you know, get in the right frame of mind to focus on their success. I also think that maybe there's a perfectionist tendency between you and this person. And so maybe you were both meant to help one another with that. Like there's kind of this all or nothing thinking here where maybe you and this person really struggle to um, open up more or struggle to give yourself personal time because you might be focused on work. But I definitely feel like there's like a psychic connection of some kind but I'm thinking it's more emotional than anything like you probably pick up on this person's emotions but there's definitely heavy um physical attraction here and I think that there is an aspect of both of you where you're kind of intrinsically tied to one another and neither of you yeah I'm just opening this up neither of you really will ever well, I mean, I don't want to say ever, but neither of you really want to let go of this connection. So if you're still in separation, I would say that this is like a confirmation that you're like this person hasn't let go of the connection either. I mean, unless you have. Um, but yeah, there's a possessiveness here where I feel like you kind of had to reevaluate what you were holding on to because you your perspective changed or this person's perspective changed and they realized, oh, I'm going to have to... Um, change my ways if I ever want to be with this person and so I think that's why the feelings here are so strong because the amount of change required for you both to be in, a, in alignment and have this rebirth and be together requires a lot of change a lot of release a lot of willingness to transform and that takes a lot of time so um, I definitely think you came into this person's life to completely transform them to create a type of rebirth not only for them but for yourself as well and um, to show you how deep connections can truly run. I feel like this is definitely the deepest um, connection this person has ever had with somebody. Um, I could be wrong about that, but I don't, I, I would say it's likely if this is your deepest connection you've ever had, it's definitely theirs too. I feel like they've never connected with somebody the way they have with you. And I would say it's it's probably pretty likely that this person was really afraid of how deep this connection was and they felt like it was easier to run away from it because it's almost kind of like you you showed them you held up a mirror to like all of their triggers and facing that was not easy and so I think this person realized it was better to lose you than it was to face the things that made them afraid of themselves but losing you they realized how much that sucked so they had to kind of <laughs> reconfigure and figure things out. So um, we're going to get some advice for you guys now or just kind of what spirit wants you to know about the connection and what might be shifting. So spirit, what do you want pile one to know about this connection? What might be shifting at this time for pile one? Okay. 
Okay, so to start, we have Prosperity Lies Ahead, a new moon in Taurus. We also have Conclusions Are Within Reach, Full Moon Eclipse, and your hard work is paying off, new moon in Capricorn. And on the back of the deck, the energy is gaining momentum, waxing moon. So I love this because this is exactly what I was saying. Um, I definitely think that there's good things coming, like your way and your person's way, whether you are talking together or not. Um, it really seems like if you're talking to this person again, I think that a lot of that has happened because of the hard work that you've been putting into yourself as well as they as well as they have been putting into themselves. It definitely seems like the energy for you two to be in, in alignment or um, come together or come out of separation is definitely getting hot, like gaining that momentum with that waxing moon, but it definitely seems like things are very favorable. We have earthly energies here and um, yeah, spirit's saying there's conclusions within reach, so I would definitely be oh my god I just cut the deck and look a new romantic cycle begins so yeah it definitely seems like there is a rebirth of romance coming here or a rebirth of this connection in a romantic way so um if that's what you've been hoping for it definitely seems like that is coming so we are going to we are going to finish off with some lovers oracle cards and see if we can get any messages from your person themselves or from spirit about this connection. All right, yeah. So the first one is emotions are a natural but necessary part of life, but they can also distort your perception and cloud your vision. In order to see things clearly, you must let go of resentment. So, oh, there's a titty. I better better turn that around. Um yeah, so this makes sense with that release, that needing to let go of resentment towards this person in order to um, move this forward. And I definitely, I definitely think there were hard feelings here on both sides that um, you both maybe had to overcome. But let's see what else we have here. We have this card and it says, let there be closeness between you, but always give each other space. Love never claims, it simply allows and gives. And then we have, if you could do anything, what would it be? The answer dwells in your heart, not in your mind, for the heart is the gateway to the soul. And this is actually, this is exactly why you came into this person's life. To help them stop making decisions purely off of logic. To help them realize that there is more to this world than um, logic, reason, and the physical realm. That there's deeper things involved and that emotions are valid and that feeling emotions are valid and you are allowed to feel things for somebody and make decisions based on your heart and not always on your mind. This is supposed this connection and the reason you came to this person's life was to show both of you because I know it's both of you. It's not just this person that there there is magic in life. There is real love in life and that you can have something really magical with somebody. And then finally, we have this card and it says, manifesting miracles. Your dream is soon to be become a reality. Trust your heart and continue to follow its guidance. So this is so beautiful. And I would definitely say that if you haven't been talking to this person, if you've been manifesting them, I would say this is a positive sign that, that, that the connection is moving forward. Just focus on doing you and focus on releasing the things no longer serving you. The more you come at home in yourself, the more this connection will um blossom is kind of what i'm hearing and spirit just wants to say how proud they are of you because you have definitely had to stick through some tough times and i think maybe listening to your gut about this connection has not always been easy so spirit really wants to commend you for your ability to believe in this connection to trust in this connection even when um you had no reason to. Uh, but overall, you came into this person's life because I think that you were, were kind of destined to meet them. Spirit used you both as catalysts for healing, as catalysts for transformation. And um, as a result, I think that it, you are showing this person so many things um, and, and just completely changing everything they thought they knew about themselves, about love, about the world. It's cataclysmic essentially is the best way I can describe it and there's a, literally a million reasons why you came into this person's life but the most important one was to 
transform yourself and to help them transform themselves as well. So pile one, I am going to leave this reading here. Thank you guys so much for watching it all the way through. I also want to say thank you so much to everyone who has been watching my ads. I really, really appreciate it. It is the simplest way to support me. It is completely free, of course, um, but it is the easiest way to exchange energy with me. So I just wanted to say thank you so much to everybody who has been doing that. Um, if you have not checked out Kino's video yet, definitely go and check hers out. I will link it below. Um, I hope this reading resonated. Definitely let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you left a like. And if you haven't already, I would love it if you subscribed and hit that little bell button to be notified whenever I upload a new video. Thank you guys so, so, so much for letting me read your cards. I hope you all have a lovely day or night whenever it is that you're watching this. And I'll help, I hope you'll come back and see me again soon. Bye. Hi there, Pile 2. If you guys chose the Black Obsidian Winnie the Pooh, this is going to be your reading on why you came into your person's life. But before we look at the why, I just want to look at who I am channeling. So if this sounds like you and your person or the person that you're thinking of, then congratulations, you found your pile. Um, if it sounds like there's aspects of you and your person in both, don't be too stressed about it doesn't really matter as long as the energies are still there. Um, but if it feels like I'm not describing you and your person, then I would definitely check out a different pile. Um, I like to do this sometimes just so that you don't have to sit through the entire reading um, in order to figure out if it's meant for you or not. So first, I'm going to look at the connecting energies between you and your person. So to start, I want to see where y'all connect and y'all connect at the oh my god i gotta say it correctly this guy right here the star soul chakra i think every time i have to say that i'm like say that five times fast star soul stuff see i can't even do it five times okay star soul chakra star soul chakra star soul chakra. yeah nope mm, not happening okay we also have trust and now looking at the people in this connection or animals i guess we have the panther, Taurus, and Cancer. The other person in this connection is being represented by the gazelle. This card called Pomp and Aries. So right off the bat, I want to talk about the zodiac signs. So you don't necessarily have to have the specific zodiac sign. Like if you resonate with one energy and your zodiac sign isn't there, that doesn't mean it's not you or it's not them. Um, it's more about the overall energies, but they certainly could be zodiac signs. But because it's a general reading, it's always important to remember that there are uh, multiple different energies and they could represent different placements. But looking at these two parties, it's quite interesting because they're both represented by fire energy. Um, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. We have Aries pretty highlighted here, but it seems like both, both people in this connection are... Um, quite spiritual and and that kind of is shown by this divine wisdom card it's likely you either met this person by chance or you met them through something sort of spiritual um maybe even not even like inherently spiritual but maybe you were following divine wisdom of some kind like maybe um you or this person was told to go to a painting class and you met this person there or something like that um it definitely kind of seems like you both are moths in a way and I don't mean that in like a like a bad way it just it seems like you and this person have the common um desire to find the light to find what motivates you both to find what um what gets you going and understand kind of the secrets of the universe you or this person could be a writer maybe both of you are um it kind of seems like you're both pretty intellectual. Um, you both like to study the universe is something that I'm seeing here. But right away, I definitely feel like you and this person are connected at a higher level. And we're probably brought to each other by chance, but not by... It's like chance kind of in quotations because it's, it's kind of like your guides being like, okay, listen, like, here's the gazelle, gazelle meet the panther. Like, all right, you know, now kiss, like... 
I don't know. I don't, actually, I don't think that would, I guess in the real world, that probably wouldn't work too well. Um, but for hypotheticals sake, I can say that. Anyway, let's start with the first person. The first person is being represented by the panther as well as Taurus and Cancer. So they could have Cancer placements, Taurus placements, or fire placements, um, Aries, Leo, Sag, like I said. But this Panther, this is somebody who is fierce. And I definitely feel like they utilize this fierceness uh, because deep down, they're very sweet and wholesome. Um, I just feel like they probably save that for only certain people. Um, especially with this like Taurus and Cancer energy, it seems like this person is very solid. Um, and it's like once they do let their guard down, they then like once you get to see that part of them, you realize like how how soft they really are. Um, and like if your person is the Panther, for example, um, you might have been shocked the first time they truly opened up to you or something like that because you're like, wait, you're really that soft? It kind of seems like this person has a pretty big, not necessarily wall up, well, I guess it's kind of a wall. In order to kind of protect the fact that they do have this like really big heart, they do have a lot of feelings and that they are very nurturing. It does feel like this person is pretty family oriented and it kind of seems like they've either been or they're coming out of a, a darker time. Um, it, the Panther is also all about purging. So I feel like whoever is the Panther, they're probably in this process of like getting rid of things that are no longer serving them and, and trying to find their way out of their current circumstances. It's like they know that they're ready for change, but they're not necessarily sure how to go about it yet. You know, with Taurus here, Taurus is all about possessions and things like that um and it's quite possible that maybe this person is focused on building their monetary abundance or um maybe they are waiting for like the perfect it feels like something career related like they're looking for the perfect like next step or next move it's like they're kind of getting rid of the things that don't serve them so that they can figure out where their path is leading them so to speak, but this person is definitely very protective, um, very nurturing, probably pretty family oriented. Um, and it's like they have these really sweet feelings for people, this really sweet, generous nature, but they only save it for the, those that they actually care about and those that they're, they're actually interested in. Because I do see that this person is pretty fierce and actually um, one thing about them is that they're definitely, they can be pretty stubborn. Um, and on top of that, you don't want to get on their bad side. Um, and you definitely don't want to threaten anybody that they care about. Because once you do that, like, that's when they're coming out full panther mode. Like, absolutely not. Like, you do not mess with my family. You do not mess with my person. Like, whatever it may be. But moving over to the gazelle, this is somebody who is hyper aware and very perceptive this is also somebody especially with like pomp here and and mixed with the gazelle this is definitely somebody who's considered pretty physically attractive um they probably like to dress up maybe they enjoy peacocking um if you don't know what peacocking is it's just like dressing up really fancy for no reason or or a reason i guess um i peacock with my friends all the time it's really fun um, so if you haven't, you should, like, if you ever just want to have a day where you feel fabulous, like just, just wear, just wear the most ridiculous outfit and like go do something like who cares? It's, it's fun. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so this person could be in Aries, especially because we have fire again, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, um, and Aries again. So Mars could be significant, which would add a uh, Scorpio energy. Um, Mars rules Aries and Scorpio, but this person definitely seems to be a natural leader. They probably have like a childlike energy about them. Aries is the first sign in the zodiac, so um, it is known for having this kind of like childlike quality, but it can be a bit impulsive. And I feel like with this gazelle here, it's likely that um, 
this person, this gazelle person, probably struggles with like anxiety of some kind or maybe insomnia. For some reason, I'm seeing like this person's always up when like the sun is rising or um, when the sun is setting. And it's, it's like they're going to bed when the sun is rising or something like that is like what I'm hearing. But with this gazelle card here, it's like this person is so perceptive, but they're, they're very like high like they're vigilant but also like hyper aware to the point where they can't really enjoy things because they're always I'm not, I'm not I'm not even like laughing in a bad way it's just like I'm just like oh the gazelle I'm so sorry um it's just like with this gazelle person it, it seems like they really uh struggle to relax like their mind is always racing they're always focused on things and and I bet with this Aries energy as well they're probably pretty stubborn about things that's probably what these two have in common is that they have um stubborn tendencies but I definitely feel like this gazelle energy is um pretty intuitive really I mean I guess with both of these being connected to divine wisdom and the fire suit or suit element that the, both of these parties are close to spirit. They're both trying to find the light in their own ways. Um, but definitely uh, there seems to be a balanced aspect of like feminine and masculine energy. Uh, it's kind of interesting is that like this column seems feminine, this column seems masculine, but then that's more feminine and that and like Aries is more masculine. So it's kind of like these two are pretty balanced and it's same with that trust. It, it, it seems like whether you're the panther or the gazelle, you and this person are connected at a very, very um, evolved level in some way. You've probably had past lives with this person you've, or something like that. It seems like this person is a part of your soul contract, like not your soul contract, uh, your soul family in some way. And you've probably had past lives with them or something like that. Um, but we're going to go ahead and see why you came into their life now. So very intrigued to see that we are going to be using the enchanted love tarot to see why and then i will pull cards at the end to get some advice and just what spirit wants you to know about this connection and um messages from this person or from spirit about this connection as well so I'm definitely intrigued to see what comes out here because spirit is already indicating the presence. Oh my God. I was like sitting on my hand without realizing it. <laughs> what happened here? Yikes. Uh, hiding that. But um, yeah, I'm sure there's some interesting info to come out. So spirit, why did pile two come into their person's life? What is the purpose for pile two. Okay, well, I'm taking this one. Oh, the high priestess. I was like, my intuition knew. I was just like, I need to take that one. Why did pile twos taking take these? Okay. Okay, so we have the page of pentacles, the two of swords. The Knight of Pentacles. Spirit, why did Pile Twos? Okay, we have the Three of Cups. And on the back of the deck, the Queen of Swords. Alrighty, let me clarify all of these now. Okay, well, this is clarifying the High Priestess. Okay, the Ace of Wands. We have the Two of Wands. We have the Four of Swords. Clarify 
the Knight of Pentacles. Okay, the Five of Swords. The Hanged Man. And on the back of the deck, the Wheel of Fortune. So, why did you come into this person's life, Pile 2? Um, well, first of all, I think you came into this person's life without really understanding why. Um, kind of depends on like how you met this person, but I feel like I mean, the way you met them doesn't even really matter. It's kind of like what... It's like this energy of like you were talking to them before you even realized why you were talking to them, so to speak. I definitely feel like no matter what age you, you and this person are, it kind of seems like you're both in, um, in these stages of, of, of finding yourself Sorry, I was hearing, finding yourself, what? Okay, so what I'm hearing is that you and this person were kind of brought to each other. You were divinely guided to find each other is kind of what I'm hearing. Um, because you both are starting starting something new I feel like one of you is further along than the other but like kind of what I'm hearing is that um you and this person have a pretty strong like intellectual connection and I think that um you bring one another a lot of happiness and so I feel like you came into this person's life to maybe help them trust their intuition more is like one big thing with this high priestess here and the two of swords i feel like with the two of swords you know oftentimes that card depicts like somebody with a blindfold holding two swords and like kind of the point of that card is is like you don't know but you really do it's like spoiler alert to your intuition um maybe you had dreams about this person before they actually even came into your life um but I definitely feel like you and this person are very logical. And so, or just this person is logical. But um, it kind of seems like you were brought to this person's life or vice versa, um, essentially to help one another find happiness and to surrender in certain ways. It's kind of like with this hanged man, I get this energy. I get the trust card. Where did that trust card go? I kind of get the trust card from this hanged man energy. It's like, maybe you two still have no reason why you're talking to each other or why, why this connection is a thing. And I think it's because spirit's asking you to trust. It's, it's kind of like this other card that I'm thinking of. Um, that's called baby steps and it's like all about um taking action before you know intuitively why you're doing something um and it kind of seems like with this five of swords and the knight of pentacles you are meant to be a support system to this person and like i said vice versa um to help them feel more confident in themselves and to help them overcome um any feelings of defeat or feelings like they can't do something it kind of seems like this person overthinks a lot and um maybe gets really down on themselves and really hard on themselves and honestly that could either be the panther or the gazelle so <laughs> once again this feels like a very um mutual and like balanced energy but um it kind of seems like you both see something solid within one another it's like maybe this um connection hasn't progressed to the point where like you can be really certain about this person maybe um feelings haven't been talked about here or anything like that um but i definitely think this person was brought i think you were brought into this person's life sorry i keep getting them confused <laughs> um i feel like you were brought into this person's life to show them that that there's more out there. There's more possible. It's like maybe this person's um, vision of life was very uh, narrow-minded or um, very like 
one track mind is kind of like what I'm hearing. Um, and I don't even mean narrow minded in a negative way, but like maybe they just had certain ideas about what they wanted and where they thought they were going. And um, spirit kind of brought you into their life to show them that maybe they're not entirely right about everything. Um, I also think spirit brought you into their life because they needed a friend. They needed somebody who kind of understood what they were going through because this person was feeling really defeated um, either before or or now or like at some point when you two began talking or met each other. It kind of seems like um, spirit brought you into this person's life to help them believe in themselves more to overcome the things that made them believe that they couldn't um, achieve what they wanted to achieve. It's kind of like with the Two of Swords and the Four of Swords. Um, it's like you came into this person's life to help them relax their mind a little bit and start listening to other, other parts of their perception. I also think that that um, partially you came into this person's life either because they manifested you or you manifested them or both. It kind of seems like both of you were dissatisfied a little bit with um, just kind of what was going on in your life. And I think spirit really kind of brought you, I think you both spoke each other into existence. I think one of the, the, the perks of this connection is that um, there's a lot of mental energy here. And um, it's interesting because that didn't really show up in the in the earlier cards, but it's pretty apparent now. And I also wonder too if maybe for some of you there's like a distance or something, because um, it kind of seems like there's an aspect of this connection that neither of you can control at this time. Maybe it's because of Rona or something else. Um, But it definitely seems like you and this person respect one another. And and um, I think that was like real, like kind of like something important on Spirit's end. Like when they brought you two together, they, they wanted to make sure that, you know, they um, that neither of you would be like, disres like disrespected by another person. I think Spirit just like brought you into this person's life because they wanted this person to have somebody that they could trust and have somebody that could be their cheerleader and have somebody that could help them feel like maybe their luck is turning because like with this divine wisdom I feel like you and this person are meant to learn a lot about like your spirituality about divinity things like that um with this high priestess here for sure it's like you and this person were meant to develop your your inner guidance, your inner knowing. And I feel like this translates to your physical world in some way. Like maybe um, you have a spiritual business or maybe you are wanting to start one or maybe you want to do like spiritual stuff on the side or something like that. It, it almost seems like part of the reason why spirit brought you and this person together is because of like your interests in, in spirituality and things like that. And it's kind of like you were meant to flip this person's world upside down so that they could see it from a different perspective and analyze it um, and, and realize that there's always better days ahead. And I think that this person feels really lucky to be able to know you, to be able to talk to you, to be able to communicate with you. And with this two of wands here, I feel like both you and this person see something solid here and you, you're just kind of interested in exploring it. Or if you're already with this person, you're interested in continuing it. This definitely feels fresher, but like, I don't know how, how fresh. Um, it certainly doesn't have to be. Um, I guess it will kind of just depend because this is a collective reading, but I think that you both know how to have fun. I think you make each other happy. I think this is a very sweet connection, kind of like with Winnie the Pooh. Like, it, it, This could definitely be a platonic connection for a lot of you because there's not a lot about feelings here um, other than like friendship with this Three of Cups. But so it definitely seems like a lot of you are kind of just friends or there, this is more platonic, but I do think for others, there's definitely like, like this is blossoming into something more like there's the potential for that. Um, but with this like high priestess, 
Ace of Wands moment going on. I don't know why I called it a moment. <laughs> uh, it kind of seems like you both met each other by following your intuition in some way, which is really interesting. And it's kind of like you came into this person's life to help them trust their intuition more. Um, you came into this person's life to help them tell their brain to, to, to take a back seat sometimes and, and to discover more of what's out there and to realize that there, there, there are good people out there that they can trust. It's kind of like what I'm hearing. And I feel like this person feels just very, very lucky to know you. They feel very lucky to um, be around you. But I want to get like a couple more cards. And I'm actually feeling called... I didn't do this for pile one, so now I feel bad, but um, I guess just don't tell them. <laughs> and if you're here from pile one, I'm sorry. I didn't think of it until now, okay? But I'm going to actually ask why you met this person using the Iris Oracle deck, because I think that will give us some more context. So, Spirit, why did, why did pile two come into their person's life okay so to start we have repopulation yeah that makes sense why did pile two come into their person's life we have no bull more of that taurus energy yeah there's like that trust again it's like y'all are really honest with each other and there's kind of like this rejuvenating aspect to the connection where you both feel like it, it's like refreshing um we also have your light so your light is really important and I think that your person definitely needed this light like especially if they're the panther because what's kind of interesting is like you know that panther let me find him could be it could be a I mean I don't know this panther for all I know they could be non-binary so I don't mean I don't mean to say he but uh yeah this panther um needed some light maybe but you could, but I mean, technically your person could be the gazelle, but I was just thinking how, it just made me think of the panther card, but okay. <laughs> uh, Spirit, why did Pile 2's person, why did they, why did they come into their person's life? Okay. We have green and the hold and death of the deceitful on the back of the deck. So yeah. Um, you came into this person's life to help them realize that uh, there are genuine people out there and that um, there are, I think you helped this person refine their light. It's actually really beautiful and kind of makes me want to cry. But um, with the hold here, I feel like this person feels safe when they talk to you. Um, and I think that one reason why Spirit brought you into their life was to um, help, help them realize that like it's okay to not be okay and like it's okay to be down and it's okay to like um to to have some have some days where you feel defeated because like the wheel can change and and you know it's all about your attitude you know this person was brought into your life to help you grow and to show now I'm going back to your person you were brought into this person's life to help them grow to show them their light if they were unable to find it or remind them of their light and you came in to show them that people can be honest and that people can um, be straightforward with them and that uh, there are people out there who aren't deceitful and I think also the psychic connection between you and this person is uh, unparalleled in a very interesting way um, and with this repopulation here I feel like it's almost like Maybe you both have been in the process of like purging and releasing things. And so the universe might have brought you two together to replace what was lost, so to speak. Um, but yeah, this is really, this is really beautiful. And like you literally met this person to find somebody who is on your wavelength. And so spirit brought you into this person's life to help them grow, to help them find camaraderie, to help them feel safe and to help them realize that, um, not everyone in the world stinks. Some people are kind of cool. Um, so now we are going to get uh, some messages from Spirit, some advice, some things that might be shifting or what Spirit wants you to know about this connection. So Pile 2, Spirit, what do you want? Pile 2 to know. T, you want me to take all of them? All right. Your hard work is paying off. New moon in Capricorn. The, are you serious? These are the... Okay, these are literally... 
These are the same cards as pile one. I literally shuffled the shit out of this deck. I'm not happy right now. Okay. Uh, we, we're gonna have to reshuffle because I'm like, like absolutely not. Like I'm bored. I want to see new cards. But if those cards, if you feel like you might be attracted to pile one in some way, maybe check that one out. There might be similarities there. Um, but pile two, Spirit, what do you want to say to pile two? What's shifting in pile two's connection and what advice do you have for them? Okay, so we have your commitment is being tested. First quarter moon. Have faith in your dreams, waxing crescent moon, a fiery climax approaches, full moon in Aries, and on the back of the deck, you and your loved ones are safe, new moon in Cancer. So I feel like Spirit is saying that something interesting might be happening here, like maybe, maybe something is happening within the connection, um, or maybe something exciting is happening. I feel like Spirit is telling you, um... that this person like in some way is meant to help you stay on track with your own goals. And I know this is supposed to be about um, you to their life, but at this point you're watching for you. So like, it's kind of important you get some advice too. So um, <laughs> I think Spirit is saying that like, not to really stress or fret about this connection to keep having faith in your dreams and with this fiery climax i mean i don't know maybe you and this person are like friends with benefits or something like i'm not trying to be that saucy but like it's there and i'm, I'm just gonna be honest <laughs> um but yeah i think that um you and this person are meant to like kind of be cheerleaders for one another and encourage one another it's really really beautiful and um I think honestly, spirits like you really don't need much advice. Like you're you're the high priestess. This person is the high priestess. It's, it's kind of like you both are are helping each other be those those high priestesses and stuff. So yeah, it's like really awesome. But let's get some more um, messages, hopefully from this person or from spirit about this person. So what messages does pile two need to hear, spirit? Okay, so to start, if I can pick it up, we have this little this little picture, and it says, let there be closeness between you, but always give each other space. No, love never claims, it simply allows and gives. That came out in the last pile too, it's so weird. Okay, meow, 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 can I pick this up? We've got this, and it says, when it comes to matters of the heart, there is no right or wrong. Every cho choice you make expands your understanding of life and love. And yeah, I think that this is kind of important because I do think like with all of this like mental energy here, I think it's hard for both of you to think about like right and not right and wrong, but like to, to know if you're, if you make a decision with your heart, like will you regret it or like something like that is kind of what I'm hearing but I think that's an important message so if that's something that you've been struggling with I feel like you are meant to help this person with that and and possibly vice versa okay uh we also have power it's this picture and it says you instinctively know what is right for you and you have the power to say no or to walk away at any time and we have life is a series of constantly shifting cycles. When we resist change, we resist the natural flow of life and create unnecessary stress. Go with the flow. You'll be surprised where it leads. And it makes sense that spirit wants you both to go with the flow because we have the hanged man here. And I feel like you came into this person's life to help bring the light back and to help show them that like they can, they don't have to be stuck in this like darkness and this sadness and that they also have this light and that they can spread their light as well. And on the back of the deck, we have freedom. There's nothing stopping you. The path is clear if you want it to be. So that is really beautiful. Um, but yeah, pile two, I think I'm going to leave this reading here. Thank you guys so much for watching all the way through. If you did, I definitely also want to say thank you so much to everyone who has been watching my ads all the way through. Um, that is the simplest and easiest way to support me and my channel and exchange energy with me. So I just wanted to give a huge shout out to everyone who does that and say thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Um, definitely let me know down in the comments how it resonates. I'm interested to know if it matches with Kinos in any way. Um, 
yeah, so definitely let me know down in the comments if you enjoyed this video. I would love it if you left a like. And if you haven't already, I would love it if you subscribed and joined our little fam over here. Uh, thank you guys so, so, so much for letting me read your cards. I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever it is that you're watching this. And I hope you'll come back and see me again soon. Bye. Hi there, Pile 3. If you guys chose the Bloodstone Snake, this is going to be your reading on why you came into your person or the person that you are thinking of's life. So before we get into that, I want to look at the connection as the whole as as a whole and also help you guys make sure you found the right pile. So we are going to be looking at the connection and then we will look at why you came into their life. So the connecting energies between you and this person are at the root chakra, holistic health, number seven, and manifest. And then the first person in this connection is being represented by the tarantula, Sagittarius, and Neptune. And then the other person in this connection is being represented by the starfish, Calypso, and Aquarius. So one thing I want to stress is that you and this person, like the energies could be mixed. Like you could see yourself in, if you can see yourself in both piles, if you're like, what if I'm a tarantula starfish? Um, that's totally fine. Uh, as long as you can find your you and your person's energies here, you'll know you have the right pile. Um, maybe you'll find there's your energy and an energy of somebody else. Maybe spirit has something else that they wanted to talk to you about, but definitely feel free to look at the other piles if you feel like you don't see you and your person clearly here. But let's just go ahead and start. So the first person in this connection is being represented by the tarantula. So the tarantula is an element of fire, Aries, Leo, and especially Sagittarius, which is being shown down here. I definitely feel like this person is a really free spirit. Um, and with Neptune, I believe um, Pisces is ruled by Neptune. So this person could have Pisces in their chart as well. Um, but it definitely seems like this tarantula person is at a place in life where they're kind of at a crossroads and they're kind of ready to claim their purpose and like get out of some situations that aren't really serving them. I kind of feel like this person has um, avoidant tendencies and slash or um, escapist tendencies. This person probably loves to travel. Um, they probably love to explore like their spiritual side and, and um, kind of go in depth about topics that interest them, especially like um, intellectual topics. One thing I'm hearing as well is that this person might really love like debate or something like that or debating with people. It definitely seems like this is somebody fierce and a force to be reckoned with. And I almost wonder like, for some of you, the tarantula person, they might be like short in stature, but like, oh my God, why spirit would you say that? Okay, only cause it's funny. Um, <laughs> the very first line of the song Shaba, short something, but my blank tall. <laughs> that, that is what I'm hearing. I can't remember who, who is Shaba by? I don't know. I feel like there's a bunch of artists. I don't think it's, it's not, I think it's ASAP Ferg, not ASAP Rocky. Shaba, look up, look up the first lyric of Shaba. And like, that's what I was hearing for maybe this person. Um, <laughs> anyway, I definitely think that this is somebody, this tarantula person, they have a lot of depth and it's kind of something that they're constantly fighting against because on one hand, they love kind of like the lighter side of life. They love trying new things, experiencing new things, exploring the world. But then at the same time, they love the rich inner depths that people have or the um, shadow sides of people. But they're very afraid of their own shadow side. It's like they love seeing the depth in others, but they do not want to face the depths within themselves, which is really, really interesting because when we move over to the starfish, which is being represented by the water signs, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, um, the starfish is somebody who is physically attractive, but also, um, 
I don't want to say superficial or surface level, but they definitely um, make decisions based upon the approval of others or um, how it will look to outsiders. Um, with this Aquarius energy here and just like kind of this starfish energy, I feel like um, this person is maybe pretty focused on approval. They might have people pleasing tendencies. Um, but I also feel like there's this tendency, like this starfish person is afraid of like commitment or opening up about certain things. Like with this Cali Ipso energy, I feel like this person, like I'm hearing like easy come, easy go. Like this starfish person likes to connect with others, but I don't think they like to connect with others on a really deep level because it's kind of uncomfortable for them to face because I feel like they probably don't really face those aspects of themselves very often. And, you know, and the and Aquarius energy is pretty detached in general. So it's kind of interesting that they're being shown, they're being portrayed as this starfish because of like all the water cards, this is definitely one of the cards that's maybe a bit more surface level. Um, and I don't think that that means that the starfish person is super is super surface level. I think it just means that the starfish, at least as of um, whenever you're watching this video, uh, they're not necessarily interested in going deeper about things. Uh, I definitely think that they are really a kind person like they're probably focused on benefiting humanity they're probably focused on their friends especially but also I feel like they uh, they have a lot of like dreams a lot of um things that they're wanting to manifest so moving back to that manifestation um, it seems like the connecting energy between the both of you is manifestation and holistic healing. Uh, what's interesting is that we have the snake again on this caduceus. I know how to say it. I know the word now. Let's give snaps for ASO because all the people in the comment section that tell me every time it's a caduceus, it's a caduceus. I learned, I learned. So thank you, my commenters. Uh, I finally learned that it is not a snake thingy, but it is in fact a caduceus. So Gotta celebrate your successes. Anyway, it kind of seems like these two manifested one another in some way because I think both parties have been trying to heal. There's something with this Calypso energy that I'm missing. So Spirit's making me grab the book just so I can make sure that I got it right. Ah, uh, okay, ephemeral. So yeah, this, this starfish person, they like connecting with others, especially intellectually, which is, I, which is where I think that like this connection really, uh, really thrives because these two, one, know, know how to have fun. And I think the starfish enjoys like hearing about other people's internal depths the same way the tarantula is, but does not like exploring their own. And so I definitely think that spirit brought these two together, like just like right off the bat, um, to help with healing that. Because I do think that this starfish person is maybe kind of notorious for um, ghosting people or uh, if not ghosting, like kind of it's like both of these both of these people are kind of notorious for like I th I'd say the starfish is more notorious for ghosting I would say the tarantula is more known for playing the field but it's like both of you have um issues when it comes to opening yourselves up to romantic relationships and what I'm seeing here is that you both kind of enjoy keeping things casual and like with the starfish especially I feel like the starfish just feels more comfortable not sticking around when things get serious like and so with that Aquarius energy I feel like the starfish does try to stay a bit more detached but it what's interesting you know maybe these two met in like a medical setting a healing setting um yoga is something that I'm hearing as well as uh, something related to aromatherapy. Interesting. Um, but it does seem like both of these 
people want more for themselves. They they want more in their lives. And I think that they're both kind of trying to find their place in the world. So um, I would say where these two connect is healing and creating more for not each other, but yourselves individually. Because like what I'm kind of seeing here is it feels like you two are very different. And for some of you, this may be a platonic connection, not a romantic connection, uh, where maybe you both were brought into each other's lives to help heal certain things, to help one another be more receptive to other types of connections. Uh, but we're going to see that in a second. We're going to look at the tarot. But overall, it's like these two are definitely connected at the root chakra. So maybe this is family of some kind um, or friends that are so close that they, they feel like family. Um, and maybe it you to manifested one another but this could also be like if it's a romantic connection I would say you know maybe it's like you and this person like y'all feel vibes for one another but maybe you haven't gotten to that point yet or maybe one of you is manifesting the other so that could be your confirmation but it kind of seems like if, if this is a romantic connection that hasn't gotten off the ground both of you are manifesting each other or manifesting this connection whether you realize it or not so I'm excited to see what is going to be said in the tarot. It doesn't really matter uh, which person you are. Like, once again, there's so many similarities between uh, both parties. So, I'm not too surprised. Um, and one thing that I have noticed is like, especially in the first two piles, even though I tried to focus solely on why you came into your person's life, um, there are a lot of like mutual, mutual reasons. So apologies if it branches out to more than just you. Um, sometimes the messages get muddled as well. So Hopefully, hopefully it resonates and makes sense, but I uh, just want to make sure these are nice and shuffled. I shuffled them off camera, but I just want to make sure they're extra shuffled. But Spirit, why did Pile 3, why did they come into their person's life? Uh, I'm hearing a song right now. It's called, so it's called um, LMK, like Let Me Know. Um by oh shoot what is it um a little something I know that's not helpful I'll I'll look it up I'll look it up at the end but it, it it's a it kind of makes sense yeah I'm like hearing the lyrics in my head right now um but spirit why did pile three come into their person's life okay so we have the eight of pentacles yeah so this could definitely be work related um okay so we have the Six of Cups, Joy. We could have, we have the Ten of Swords, Difficulty. We have the Six of Pentacles, Generosity. What else, Spirit? Okay, we have the Ten of Pentacles. And on the back of the deck, the fool. Okay. Oh, you know what's funny? What, I, what I'm thinking about. Um, for those of you who aren't um, American, there's an American flag that's not the American flag, but it, it's, I feel like it's one from like the revolutionary era and it's of a snake and it says like, don't tread on me. And, it, and I'm not seeing that one. I'm seeing the meme version of it where it's like no step on snake and, but it's like snake with like S N E K. So I don't know why I just heard no step on snake. So I don't know if y'all had to deal with some snakes in the past or something like that. Uh, but let's get some clarifiers here, spirit. Okay, so we have the Empress and the High Priestess for the Eight of Pentacles. What about the, okay, so yeah, 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 this is already making so much sense. Okay, T 
keep going now, Spirit. What about the Ten of Swords, please? Judgment. How about the Six of Pentacles? The Four of Cups. The Queen of Swords. And on the back of the deck, oh, the Two of Cups. Okay, yeah, this is exactly, oh, okay, this is so cute. <laughs> um, so, if you work with this person, let me just say that, like, if y'all haven't, like, talked about how you're feeling about one another or anything like that, let's just say the feelings are mutual, uh, very mutual. Um, in fact, you kind of came into this person's life because you were, like, literally meant to. Um, and... I think that this person, they've always been really focused on work. And if you work in the same place as this person, and, and one thing I'm seeing is like, you might not work, like like if you work in like a really big um, office building, for example, like you might not work for the same company, but you might like see this person in passing, like at, um, like in an elevator or something like that is something that I'm hearing. Uh, it doesn't have to be, but you, Spirit is saying that you are perfect for this person in some kind of way. Um, I'll get into what kind of way that is. Oh, oh, hello, Queen of Cups. <gasps> Sister Queen was hiding. Oh my God. Okay, that's so sweet. All right, this is this is so cute. I just like want to throw up and jump out a window, but I'm not. Um so you both <laughs> are emotionally unavailable as hell. Um or if you are not now, you once were for sure. And and what's kind of interesting is that even though I picked up on people pleasing tendencies, it's like yeah, you want to please other people, but you're like you or the other person is uncomfortable with people like going out of their way to help you, if that makes sense. Um, but you came into this person's life. I mean, the fact that we have the Six of Cups here, this is a soulmate card. This is probably somebody that you've had past lives with. We have counterparts here with the King of Cups and the Queen of Cups. Um, I feel like one of you is very isolated. They isolated their emotions while the other um, was just very... And like, you know, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if the starfish was being represented by the Queen of Cups and the Queen of Swords, where in order to protect themselves, they decided to just be very surface level about their connection so that they didn't get hurt. Um, yeah, and like with this difficulty, it's like maybe spirit, like, for example, if you're the starfish, spirit brought you into the tarantula's life to make you realize that um, you can overcome people who have betrayed you or you can see a perspective change. You can change your perspective. Um, but if you're the tarantula, for example, uh, spirit brought you into the starfish's life to maybe help them be more open and receptive to joy and to maybe show you that um, you can be open to love, that you can be open to emotional fulfillment of some kind. Um, we have Virgo energy here with the Hermit um, and Aries energy with the Fool. But the fact that like, even if this is a platonic connection, it's literally meant to, this connection, like Spirit brought you two together to help you both find like, more romance or what's right for you um unless you're like not into romance or you're like asexual or something like that then i would definitely think that this is a platonic connection where um this person is your match in, in the sense that they respect um your feelings and like how you feel and like they just they accept you and they respect you the way you deserve to be and so that's a big reason why spirit um brought you into this person's life or maybe vice versa but um it's like you both created this situation without even realizing it just by following your intuition and it's because your souls know each other like this isn't your first rodeo so to speak um 
maybe you knew this person through family friends, maybe th from the same hometown or something like that. Um, certainly doesn't have to be, but I, I definitely think that um, you came into this person's life to help them reevaluate who they give their time and energy to and to also realize that there's perfection and imperfection and to realize that they can start over and that they can trust people and that they can be open to romance of some kind again because I definitely feel like this person was definitely on guard like they did not feel safe like the only thing that made them feel safe is like diamonds and it doesn't have to necessarily be diamonds but like fabulous things, material items, shit like that. Um, yeah, you came into this person's life to help change their perspective and overcome a lot of their own difficulties, to help them feel joy again and help them get out of their shell. And on top of that, you came into their life to help them start fresh and start new. And, and if this is a romantic connection to experience authentic loving romance with somebody who actually gets them because what's beautiful about the well okay emotional unavailability isn't beautiful but it is beautiful for two emotionally unavailable people to find themselves and then realize like oh like hey like we don't trust anybody we've both been hurt by other people everyone else sucks let's just hang out together um and I think that's kind of what's what's happening here. And if it hasn't happened yet, it will. Uh, because even because spirit has told me that for some of you, you maybe haven't like, like even had a full on conversation with this person yet, which is really insane. So you're kind of getting like a spoiler alert to like kind of what's all going to happen here. Kind of like a rite of passage, so to speak. But uh, you and this person are really meant to find vulnerability in one another and find um, find somebody that truly understands you and helps you reevaluate what it is that's truly important in life and if and and to make you reevaluate if um, or make them reevaluate sorry you're meant to help them reevaluate if um, if by protecting themselves, are they just denying themselves opportunities? Are they really protecting themselves or are they um, blocking themselves from finding joy? It's it's really interesting, but it, it definitely seems like there's emotional counterparts and intellectual counterparts. Even though the king of swords isn't here, we do have the hermit and with that Virgo energy, you know, Virgo energy is very analytical and introspective. So with the, I kind of see the, the queen of swords with like the hermit low key a little bit, but um there's definitely counterpart energy and i think that that um this person just sees you as perfect very intuitive they they might be drawn to you so like i was saying if this is like a, a connection where you haven't even really gotten to know them yet but you just feel something and you don't know why they feel it too trust me um maybe this can for for some of you this connection is a long time coming maybe you had feelings for this person and like nothing really ever happened something might be coming around there might be a fresh start but i definitely think you came into this person's life to either um learn how to let your guard well well you came into this person's life to learn how to let your guard down and help them do the same to learn how to open up to somebody again and and realize that you know just because a ten of swords moment so if you don't know what the ten of like the real ten of swords looks like it's like a guy laying down on his back and there's like 10 swords on his back and he's bleeding and it's like it's dark it's like meh but there's this there's this little sliver of yellow light and it's like that new light coming in and so it's kind of like you were meant to help them see the light out of um i'm hearing like that disney song like at last i see the light i don't know if it's like rapunzel or something um but yeah you were kind of meant to help them open up it's like you two are very isolated and used to kind of being independent and on your own and it's like this spirit brought you into this person's life to help them be more open to love again to be more open to authentic kindness and, and vulnerability vulnerability is huge and realize that there's more to life than just you know working and and I think you both see the value in in exploring life but when it comes to exploring yourselves it's like nah I don't really want to do that so I think that spirit brought you into each other's lives to help you 
with that. But um, we are going to use this Oracle deck to get a little bit more insight into why you came into their life. I'm very, I'm very curious. Unfortunately, I didn't do this for pile one because I didn't think about it until pile two. Um, so if you're coming from pile one, I'm sorry. And if you're not coming from pile one, you better keep it a secret so I don't look like a look like I was excluding anybody because that wasn't my intention. Okay. Spirit, why did pile three come into their person's life? Are you serious? Oh my god. Okay, well this came out this literally came out in pile two. I'm gonna be okay. I see why that one's coming out. I'm gonna okay. There we go. So we have love, gross love. What? Why? What? Ah. Okay. Sorry. Just having a mini like, not sure what I'm doing moment. Uh. Okay. Spirit, why did pile three come into their person's life? Okay. Scrying your yeah. You guys are so similar. It's not even funny. Which is amazing because you're represented by a tarantula and a starfish. So yeah. You know. Two, two animals in the natural world that probably would not hang out. Um, I don't know, would starfish, starfishes and tarantulas, they probably, they probably wouldn't speak the same language, right? You know, starfishes, they'd speak like starfish and tarantulas would speak tarantula and, you know. So maybe it's y'all's job to find a way to, to bring those two together um and on the back of the deck dream travel yeah so maybe you've been having dreams about this person or maybe you come into this person's dreams um but yeah you are definitely meant to help this person uh open up their psychic abilities their spirituality um you are kind of with that manifestation i can definitely see that you and this person whether you y'all have talked about it together or not have been in this place where you're trying to heal and you're trying to regenerate from the things that have really hurt you in the past and from things just not serving you anymore like you're trying to manifest and with this alchemy it's like you're creating your own reality as is your person and that's like that's kind of what's brought you to into alignment but like you're meant to replace things that um, were no longer serving your person, as well as you're meant to show them love. Like, in, in you're like, I don't know how to show them love. And it's that, and that's where we're kind of going within and finding that self-love is. And, you know, love grows love. So, I mean, you came into this person's life to help them experience love, whether it's a platonically, platonic love, and help them with their romantic life, with their romantic love, something like that but with the sky mirror here there's similarities between you two that are just uncanny and the things that you admire in them they admire in you and what's awesome is that you both have those qualities the qualities that you admire in this person you have them and the qualities that they admire in you you have them and so spirit's kind of trying to get you both to see that um the qualities you admire in each other so much have been within you this whole time if you would just stop and look instead of looking everywhere else but I, I'm not trying to, I don't want to like, I'm like, I'm like yelling at spirit. I'm like, I don't want to lecture them. Like this isn't a lecture. Um, but with this restlessness here, I feel like you came in to kind of help this person realize that they don't have to be on edge all the time, that they're, that they can trust somebody and that situations can be transformed. And like with this dream travel here, I feel like you maybe help this person in their dreams or like help communicate with them. Maybe they met you in your dreams before, um, they met you in person or maybe y'all have been meeting each other out on the astral and like so spirit is kind of using you as a mechanism to help them get more comfortable with like that dream travel but with this alchemy here I definitely feel like you and this person have the potential to create whatever it is that you want um and that's kind of what's beautiful it's like two very powerful souls that are starting to rediscover parts of them that they had shut off because they were afraid of getting hurt again and it's like now you both can be vulnerable and open and go after the things that you both truly want and support one another and it. it's honestly really beautiful and it's like you came into this person's life to help them create the life that they want and vice versa because y'all are so similar and and the things that you see in each other are um qualities that you already have and with this love grows love like 
you're just meant to add more love to the world and and with this romance like you came into this person's life to learn how to trust somebody again and and go after romance whether it's with this person or through this person in some way so that's really really fascinating and I am seeing everything you need to soon right here and so it might be overwhelming to be open to this kind of love but spirit is saying that it's okay and that you can trust it so we're gonna get you some advice now and see what might be shifting in this connection what spirit wants you to know so pile three spirit what do you want pile three to know about this connection what might be shifting all right <laughs> those moonology cards said here i am okay so we have hold your vision fixed moon don't let your past hold you back south node a new romantic cycle begins and show the world the real you. So yeah, when it comes to this person, spirit is definitely saying like, you know, maybe if you've had a past with this person and it hasn't gone very well, um, you know, don't let your past hold you back. Or if things haven't gone well in your past, so you're saying don't let your past hold you back. Um, hold your vision on what you want, especially if you're manifesting this specific person or if you're manifesting love, like this person is definitely coming in. Spirit is saying a new romantic cycle begins. And the best thing that you can do for yourselves, pile three, is release the need to be anybody but yourself like with this snake it's almost like shedding the skin that doesn't belong to you anymore that dead skin that really isn't a part of you and being willing to be who you truly are because that is what's going to make you truly magnetic and that is what is going to just attract this person to you even more but i want to get messages from this person or from the universe to you about this person so Spirit, what do you want to say to Pile 3 about their connection? What do they need to know at this time? Okay, T. Well, we have two that just came out. Oh my gosh. So we have this card and it says soulmate. Your soulmate is already with you in spirit. Believe this and they will manifest physically. So yeah, if you've been trying to manifest them, this is your sign that they're well on their way. And then we have this card and it says friendship. Nurture the bonds of friendship within your relationship and your love life will dramatically improve. Yeah. I mean, like you and this person are not just like, it's not I, like, I definitely feel like if you have a romantic connection with them, it will start as friends. It will start as something small and, and develop from there. And I think that's really beautiful. I'm going to take that card, um, but I'm going to put all the rest back. So we have this. Ah, I just threw it. Sacred union. Honor and treasure your relationship for it is truly sacred. And then finally, we have this card that was on the back of the deck. And it says, when you pass from this world, you take nothing with you but your soul and the memories you sh have shared with those you love. And so that's why I think that you feel a familiarity to this person. Oh, well, yeah, obviously soulmate. We have the soulmate card here and the two of cups. Like there's definitely something really real here. And this is a sacred union where you're either meant to be a platonic soulmate where you're all, you are platonic soulmates or you are deeper soulmates of some kind um and if you're unaware like you can have tons of different soulmates so um yeah anyway spirit just showed this to me and i think it's interesting because it says look inside yourself examine what is causing you to feel this way and i and i feel like that's what i was talking about a lot in the beginning where like neither of you really want to look inside yourself so you might look inside one another not in a, like a weird way um, <laughs> but like in a, in, a, in a metaphoric way uh you might look inside each other and, and then help it'll help illuminate your inner depths that maybe you have trouble exploring or don't quite understand but there's definitely soul memories attached here and there's definitely some type of soul connection here so this is really really beautiful pile four i definitely think you came into this person's life because you were always meant to and it was just, it was just bound to happen and like if, if things really haven't gotten off the ground yet i definitely think that they will with that new romantic cycle beginning um i think that maybe you both had karmic lessons that you needed to learn in order to kind of move forward but spirit is definitely saying that like this is a special connection and you can trust it like if you want to trust this person you can 
So pile four, I'm gonna leave your reading here. Thank you guys so much for watching all the way through if you did. I also wanna say thank you so much to everybody who watches my ads all the way through. Um, that is the easiest and simplest way to support my channel. And so I just wanna say thank you so much to everybody that does. Um, also, I don't pick the ads. If anyone thinks that I don't pick the ads. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to say thank you for supporting me and my channel. Um, definitely let me know down in the comments how it resonates. I would love to hear. Um, if you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you left a like. If you haven't already, I would love it if you subscribed. Go ahead and check out Kino's video if you haven't as well to see the vice versa of this. But I am going to leave your reading here, pile three cheese. Okay. Um, but yeah, thank you for letting me read your cards. I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever it is that you're watching this and I hope you'll come back and see me again soon. Bye. Hi there, pile four. If you guys chose this cute little fluorite deer, this is going to be your reading on why you came into the person you are thinking of or your person's life. So to make sure that this is the connection you are wanting to know about or it's your pile, we're going to look at the connection as a whole first and then I'm going to look at why you specifically came into their life. So if I'm talking about this and it doesn't seem like... It doesn't seem like you can find yourself in it at the very least. Um, this probably isn't your pile and you might want to try a different one, but I like doing this because uh, it helps you figure out in the beginning of the reading whether the reading is actually for you or not so you don't have to sit through the whole thing. But let's look at what you and your person, where you both connect first. And so to start, you both connect at the star soul chakra, which is this chakra right here. It's one just above the crown chakra and it is universal light. And then you also connect with self love. Now, one thing really interesting when I was shuffling this pile, you both got two animal cards. So we'll look at the first person first. We have the raccoon and the dragonfly in addition to this card that says boundless you have that right there and uh uranus so let's just acknowledge it's the butt planet <laughs> it's kind of funny haha <laughs> uranus okay now we can be mature and move on now that we have acknowledged it is indeed the butt planet and there are in fact many butt jokes we can and should make on our own time because um this this isn't this isn't a workplace this is a make silly jokes about things that sounds like butt butts place well my comment section is at least as long as it's uplifting and joyful and then the other person is being represented by the bear and the moth. So what's actually interesting, I guess, well, let me lay these down first. So we also have revival and Saturnus or Saturn, essentially. Um, when I was originally shuffling, two cards came out and I wasn't sure if they were both meant for one person or if they were meant to be divided between the both of you. And so I was like, okay, well, I'll shuffle again. And then if it's, you know, an air sign or something like that, if it's close to this, then I'll know what to do. And then I shuffled again and I got two more cards and it was like the same combination of like an earth and an air sign. So I was like, oh, okay, it's both of them. So let's go ahead and start. So to start with the first person here, this is definitely somebody a bit more evolved and definitely the person in the connection who is a bit more evolved. This is somebody who is really creative, although they may um, hide that fact. They might be a little bit shy about their um, creative talents or artistic talents, but they're also very brilliant and they have a mind that is like constantly racing. Um, this person is probably a night owl. Um, Oh, Spirit's asking me to mention this too before I keep going and I forget. Um, if you see yourself in both of these, don't worry. Um, it's it's often the case that like the energies will be mixed. It's okay to identify it with one more than the other. This is more so to just confirm like what's going on and the fact that this is your reading because once we switch to the tarot, then we'll look at why you came into this person's life. So if you're like, 
well, what if I'm a rack drag bear moth? I'm going to be like, that's totally fine. You can be a rack drag bear moth. Um, or if you're a moth bear f fly rack, you can, you can be that too. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so the first person in this connection, uh, I get heavy Aquarius energy. The signs being shown here are uh, the earth signs, Virgo, Capricorn, Taurus, and the air signs, um, Libra, Aquarius, Gemini. Um, but I get heavy Aquarius just because I believe um, Uranus is Aquarius's chart ruler or something like that. Um, I could be wrong, but we also have this boundless energy here as well. And so I feel like this person is somebody who tries to see the light. They constantly have wonderful ideas floating around in their mind, but um, they might struggle to ground them into reality because they might not believe in themselves or they might not be sure how to create them in reality or how they want to go about them. There might be perfectionist tendencies here or um, the belief that they need to be better in some way, shape, or form before they can create things the way that they want to. Um, it's kind of funny. It definitely seems like this person is, maybe they get distracted really quickly or they have a lot of energy. With this boundless card here, I feel like um, this is somebody who maybe struggles between feeling really great and then feeling really low at times. But like at the end of the day, they kind of know that they're the shit. They kind of know that they have a lot of wonderful ideas and they know that um, they're meant to do great things or that they'll continue to keep doing great things. It's kind of like they know that every day is a fresh start. And with this boundless energy, it's like they can get down, but like they're not down for too long before they know how to get back up again. It, it It's like they're either in this very light, ethereal, like... I don't want to say manic pixie dream girl or dream guy because like that's so one-dimensional and I don't even like that term but it's kind of like that energy it's like kind of like manic pixie but yeah I don't know the other side of that though would be like pretty like emo gothy like not not that you have to be like emo or literally emo or goth but like this person just kind of seems to be either like really happy excited happy to be here fun in a good mood or they're like a raccoon like you know stay out of my garbage can like I'm not leaving this dumpster I'm not coming outside unless it's like really dark out like maybe maybe you only see this person if this is the other person for example at night or in the morning it's kind of like this person has two sides to them um and and like so much mental energy that they just have a hard time grounding and so it's like if this is you for example other people might have a hard time truly understanding you because a lot of the brilliance that you have stays in your head um if this is your person you might only see kind of the raccoon parts of them like you know the maybe you only see them at night or maybe um Maybe you know that there's a lot of genius in there, but uh, they don't, they're afraid of expressing it. It's kind of like maybe they're a bit defensive. Um, maybe they can be a bit like standoffish or detached from things. But moving over to the bear, I'll kind of get back to this because there's, there's more to go into this, but I want to move on to the bear. Um, the bear moth, I guess I should say. The bamoth, the both, the mare whatever you want to call it. This person is coming out of a really tough cycle. In fact, one thing that I was hearing was Saturn return. So um, maybe if you've been, maybe the, if this is you or your person, maybe you have gone through recently your Saturn return or um, have just gotten out of that. With this revival here, it seems like whoever this person is, they are coming out of a really tough period of time where they had to learn a lot of tough lessons and they're finally awakening. They're finally seeing the light again. And it's kind of like this is this person here. It's like they're having, they're coming out of a dark night of the soul is kind of what I'm seeing here. And they're kind of um, just starting to open up to the light and just kind of coming out of a lot of tough cycles. It's really interesting because 
Uranus energy talks about being expansive and unstoppable, whereas Saturn is all about restriction. And so it's kind of like this person has been feeling really restricted, whereas this person is starting to get out of their, um, not get, no, sorry, I didn't mean to say get out. They're, they're, um, they're experiencing this boundless energy, whereas this person is kind of getting out of those feelings of restriction. Now, what's interesting is that this could 100%, like I was hearing it as I was shuffling, this could definitely be two people who are in separation. I would say of all three piles, if any pile, like the two people are in separation, I would say this one is the most likely. Um, certainly doesn't have to be. This could definitely be somebody that maybe you don't see all the time because like maybe you live at a distance or um, maybe you both are just in the process of healing and not in the place for a relationship because it does kind of feel like you and this person are not together. I would say of all the piles, it's the least likely that you and this person are together, but I could be wrong. Maybe you are just starting a new cycle. Maybe this is just long distance because... Um, because of any any number of reasons but what's beautiful about this connection is the fact that you're connected through light and so one thing that spirit is telling me is that you can never be separated from this person even if you're in separation with them you're still with them because through the light you are connected to this person because this is a very like ethereal kind of cosmic like connection and what you both are meant to be focusing on is self-love. And I think that's literally what you both are trying to do right now, whether together or separately. So if you are together, I definitely think you both are trying to figure out how to take care of yourselves individually and not um, rely on the other person to bring you happiness. But if you are not with this person, I definitely think you are learning how to kind of detach and release not like forever if that's something you're worried about, but just release from the connection to where you have faith that like everything is meant to work out work out the way it will. Like I'm focused, you're, you're focused. I'm like thinking from your perspective, like I'm focusing on me and my love and I feel like that's what your person is focusing on as well. Um, but yeah, it kind of seems like one person is further along on this self-love journey than the other one is. I feel like, you know, the bear moth person, they are, they had to learn a lot of karmic lessons and they're kind of just coming out of this tough cycle where now they're awakened to the idea that they do need to be more focused on this self-love and like kind of deepening their connection to the universe. Whereas I feel like this dragonfly, this, this rack drag, if you will, this fly rack, um, <laughs> uh they've kind of been at it for a little little while longer and they have more energy because they've kind of just been because they've been headed down this self-love path a lot longer it's like the, this this person believes in themselves a little bit more than the the bear moth person does and that's only because they've been going down this journey going down this self-love path a little bit longer um but both of these people are learning how to be more confident in themselves. They're learning how to trust themselves and, and how to open up to spirit more and how to um, really embody the light. And I think if you were unaware of this, you are 100% connected to this person through the astral realm. And whenever you have like moments where you're like, I feel like I can feel this person, that's you feeling them like you're right because you both are literally connected through light, through... Um, meditation through love loving light energy is the way you connect and so this person is coming out of a dark night of the soul it doesn't have to be a dark night of the soul but they're coming out of a rough time and they're awakening in some way that they weren't before the bear is all about awakening from some type of hibernation and with this revival here it's kind of like they're ready to go towards the light and um move on from these lessons that they've ha been having to learn whereas this person is kind of just staying in their own lane doing their own thing i almost noticed even in in the butt card they're like looking over at this person like oh i wonder when they're gonna come join me like i'm over here like holding the whole ass universe by myself like where where are they um but yeah it's, it's like this kind of this this rack fly person they're learning to stay in their lane and focus on them and do their own things and focus on what's going on in their head whereas um this bear moth person is learning how to fully 
fully embody the lessons they've had to learn and and move forward and focus on this energy of love and universal light so this is really beautiful i'm definitely intrigued to see what's what spirit is going to say about why you came into their life because i definitely think it has something to do with this deeper universal light so we're going to be using the enchanted love tarot um and then later the iris oracle and then we'll pull advice and things you need to know give me like two seconds i just need to get a sip of water <laughs> sorry about that i was like oh my throat's going dry <clears> throat> which is interesting maybe you haven't talked to this person in a while or maybe you've been like having trouble being honest with this person in some way because i do notice like maybe communication is blocked in some way like my throat my throat chakra feels a bit blocked <clears throat> but definitely intrigued to see uh what spirit has to say so ah that's, that was a shitty shuffle but i think this card is meant for you so i'm gonna keep it okay the nine of pentacles no nope nine of wands nine of wands i'm a liar sorry okay anyway spirit um why did pile four come into their person's life what is what makes pile four so damn significant well, I mean, clearly you're significant if you are either a bear moth hybrid or a raccoon dragonfly hybrid. Um, okay, we have the two of cups. Oh, oh, and we have the ace of pentacles. Okay, this is cute as shit. Okay, we have that six of cups. Joy. And actually what's interesting is that for some of you, you may not know who this person is yet. Spirit was kind of telling me that. And I was like, but this is all about why they came into their life. And, and Spirit was like, well, for some of them, they're manifesting this person right now through self-love. But I didn't, you'll know if, if that, you'll know if that message is for you. If you're like, this sounds like me, but like, I don't know who this person is. It's because you haven't met them yet. Um, yeah, five of pentacles, anxiety, and the world consummation saucy okay let's get some clarifiers now let's see, can you clarify okay the ace of swords clarify the two of cups for me please the two of swords Have, now we have the nine of pentacles so she's back hello queen um okay so what else okay we have the sun oh this is so this is so beautiful we also have the fool and on the back of the deck the eight of cups sacrifice okay all righty so pile four why did you come into this person's life you came into this person's life to help them triumph over old habits that were no longer serving them because you're the romantic okay i wouldn't i would definitely say it's not likely that this is a platonic connection um i just i just do not feel platonic energy let me just say that um but i do see here that you came into this person's life to help them maybe stop over intellectualizing their feelings and maybe trust um, trust their feelings for once. But I also think you came into this person's life to experience romance, to experience genuine feelings with someone. And with this Ace of Pentacles, with the Nine of Pentacles, it's like you and this person could create the Ten of Pentacles. And I would say that's especially likely, like if you both are right now working on that, on your, on, if you're on your self-love grind, on your self-love shit, um, you're focused on your independence. It's like the reward is something solid for the both of you. Like this last pentacle to create that beautiful Ten of Pentacles, like a legacy. Because with the Six of Cups here, 
it's definitely likely that this is kind of like a soulmate of some kind um and I mean I think that you make this person really happy and like part of a lot a big reason why you're in their life is to help give them support and bring them happiness and if you're in separation with this person you know the biggest reason for that is because you know it's not in alignment to be that way right now like if that person if your person can't accept like this kind this kind of love and support then they need to learn how to accept that before that can like really happen but you came into this person's life to help bring them happiness and bring them joy and and bring them a feeling that they've never had before of like somebody knows them deeper than they know themselves which is really interesting um oh and my water tank just started so yeah this person low-key like might cry about you sometimes like just like especially like if if you're not talking to this person like they might just miss you or something like that that like makes me really sad it makes me want to cry <laughs> um and, and I'm not laughing in like a like in a disparaging way at all I'm just more like a nervous laugh because like I don't want to start crying because like I feel because I definitely feel a lot of like sadness like with this five of pentacles it's like you both want a fresh start here um and I feel like you came into this person's life to help them understand like this person definitely has a mindset of lack. And I feel like you came in to show them that they can trust, trust somebody again, that, that they don't need to have so much anxiety, so much fear about um, the people around them. And that there are some people that are there to, to add to their life, not to take something from them, not to take anything away from them. Um, and I think the most beautiful thing about this is that this column right here, this is not about just you. This is about both of you. The reason you came into each other's lives was to learn how to close out cycles, to make sacrifices that and, and sacrifice those things that no longer serve you. So to walk away from difficult emotional things and to love yourself more than anything else. Um, you, you know, you can love someone, but if you love yourself more, then you'll know like, not to put up with certain things but it's like with this world card here it's like almost finishing a cycle of some kind you were meant to you brought this you were brought into this person's life to help them see that first of all they can't have their cake and eat it too and that sacrifices are involved they might also they could have um the world has all the fixed energies so um taurus leo Aquarius and Scorpio so maybe this person has a really fixed idea of what love is and, and things like that um but it's like you came in to help them close out a cycle and move on from really difficult emotional things and I think um maybe some self-destructive habits that have maybe stopped them from achieving what they want from getting that triumph you're meant to bring the light in and i think that makes a lot of sense with you both being connected through that universal light it's like um you both are these like beautiful badass people but um might be really afraid of vulnerability or might be on this spiritual journey and just trying to learn things for yourself but what I really see here is that you came into this person's life to like truly add to it, to, to make things happy, to make their life and your life happy, to just add and support and, and be there for somebody else, to be there for somebody that, you know, makes you feel loved and makes you feel like on top of the world. You know, with this sun card here, we have more Leo here. I I always see Aries in the Fool, but maybe that's because I'm biased as an Aries. But, um, <laughs> which is kind of funny because the fact that the Fool says trust. Because, like, I know a lot of people talk about Aries men and they're like, I don't trust Aries men. And I'm like, I don't blame you. <laughs> no shade to Aries men. Um, we love you. With peace and love. <laughs> with peace and love some of you are difficult sometimes um but yeah it definitely seems like you came into this person's life as a reward 
for all their hard work. And so that's why for some of you, you haven't met this person yet, or um, you haven't come back into, you haven't, you're still in separation with them because it's like, you're still learning that lesson of love and like learning how to support yourself and stuff like that. But no matter what, I definitely feel like you came into this person's life to show them what love actually looks like and to realize when they might be kind of shooting themselves in the foot and that they can triumph over the things that um, they might be afraid of. Like, I definitely feel like they maybe get, um, they definitely have walls up for sure. And I definitely think you came in to help break down those walls. Like, <laughs> I just saw, I just saw this, um, Spirit just showed me this clip from The Fairly Odd Parents, which is a cartoon on Nickelodeon that's kind of old at this point, but um, if you haven't seen it, that's what I'm referencing. And it's like this little kid named Timmy, he's like in his room and his parents are like, oh, Timmy, I'm, <laughs> they're like, they're like, as your parent, I am asserting my authority. As a parent, I'm respecting your privacy by asking to come in, but also as your parent, but as an authority, oh, fuck, I can't remember it. It's like, essentially, they're like, they're, they're saying, <laughs> like, uh, we're being respectful by asking if we can come in, but on the same token, we're your parents and have authority over you, so we're coming in anyway, and they have this, like, giant battering ram, and they just, like, bash his door down, and it's, like, really funny when it's actually worded correctly, but it's kind of like you, you have kind of done that to them, where you've <laughs> taken this battering ram and just been like, oh, those are your walls? Like, mm, absolutely not. Like, bye, 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 and I feel like this person has probably done that or will do that in the future. So uh, pay attention to that. But um, I, I definitely think this is all for the best. It's just breaking things down to let more light in. And I think that's really beautiful. Um, but we're going to get a couple more cards here um, with the Iris Oracle and see why else you came into this person's life. So Spirit, why else did um, Pile 4 come into their person's life okay so fire mother this is phoenix energy i definitely feel like this pile is connected to pile one in some way we also have volcano yeah to make to make them erupt that's kind of gross spirit ew um we also have can't be caught and laughing and crying i'm feeling called to take this one under a spell and cast your sacred symbols okay so there's definitely something about manifestation in this like there's something sacred about about this connection or like manifestation maybe maybe you both have like the same religion or maybe the same background the same culture cultural upbringing or maybe your sacred symbol is something stupid like um I don't know, like McDonald's or something. It's like, yeah, McDonald's is like sacred to us or something. Or just like little, like, sacred. This is about synchronicities. Okay, so one reason you came into this person's life was to help them be more aware of synchronicities and to also embody that light and realize that nobody else can really catch them. Forward movement is really important here. And I think one reason you came into this person's life was to help them move forward and not, and not, um, allow these negative energies to catch them and hold them down. I also think that there's something about um, where like, I feel like this is kind of on your end or on their end or maybe both, but like with this under a spell, I feel like you and this person had to learn how to look at things realistically and not wear rose colored glasses. But I also think you, you are or ha were meant to show this person how to be vulnerable with their emotions and, and experience highs and lows and uh, be open about all of it. And with this volcano here, like I feel like it's like this person is suppressing so much and it's possible you're doing the same. There's a lot of mirroring energy here. And it's like you came into each other's lives to just erupt that and, and make, make each other more open about like what you're feeling and what you're going through. And with this fire mother here, this is all about the Phoenix. And it's like, you literally came into this person's life to help them rise from the ashes and for you to learn how to do the same, because it's kind of like what you do, they do. And it's like some, both of you needed to change 
in some way because what you were doing wasn't working. And so now it's like you guys are kind of learning. It's like you got to keep moving forward. You got to focus on you. You got to focus on the love, on the light. And it's kind of like everything else is falling in line. But really with this like underneath being be free, do what you love. I really feel like Spirit is saying you were meant to kind of come into this person's life to realize and help them realize that, you know, life is a mixture of... Um, fixed factors and free will and there's a lot of free will involved and I feel like spirit is saying you know be free to do what makes you happy like for some of you maybe losing this person was your biggest fear and if that already happened you've already faced that and so you know what more do you really have to fear go out and live your life follow follow your dreams like do what makes you happy like if this is right you will come into alignment with it but you are definitely meant to learn that like with this connection like you and this person to do what makes you happy because ultimately it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks it just matters like what makes you happy and what makes you feel good that's like really all you need and I think that like with this volcano it's like you are meant to help this person purge a lot of things that were no longer serving them like with this eight of cups they needed some type of emotional purge especially with that laughing and crying to like you also opened up their third eye and I think, well, I guess for this guy it says seventh eye, but um, yeah, with this sacrifice, like you were meant to kind of help. I think this is really vice versa. Like I think it kind of works both ways, but you were really meant to help show them how, um, how closing out a cycle means you have to like lose some things that you might not be ready to let go of, but in turn, you welcome in things so much better and you're able to triumph over things that you thought you could never do and just become a better person. And I mean, I don't really know what else to say other than that, but it's pretty beautiful. Um, but we're going to move on to the Moonology cards now and see what might be shifting in this connection or what spirit wants you to know about it. So spirit, what do you want Pile 4 to know about this connection? What is important? Okay, this is the dreams card, isn't it? Yeah, have faith in your dreams. So yeah, that's that's really, that's one big thing that spirit wants you to be focused on. We also have expect powerful change, new moon eclipse. So yeah, things could definitely change in this situation. Um, and the more you powerfully change within, the more your external surroundings will reflect that. Uh, what else, spirit? Oh, don't let pride get in your way, full moon in Leo, and on the back of the deck, surrender to the divine. Yeah, so maybe maybe you and this person have to let go of some ego things to kind of admit um, feelings or admit truths or admit, um, admit where you are wrong or release things. Like maybe you'll have to admit that you were wrong about things you thought you wanted or things that you thought were... Um, an alignment that you decided weren't um with this surrender to the divine though spirit is saying just release the need to always know release the need to always be right just trust that spirit really has your back on this and like as long as you're doing what makes you happy you will always be in alignment and always be on the right path like there's really no way for you to mess it up but we're gonna get some messages from this person and spirit about this person so spirit what do you want pile for to know okay so we have this card and it says, beware of what you are projecting for the qualities for the qualities you admire in one another are qualities you both possess. Equally so, the qualities you don't like are also in your own reflection. So yeah, like that prideful energy. And I mean, the fact that you both literally mirrored uh, an earth and an air energy, I think really should, goes to show how similar you two are. So we also have this and it says, oh my God. <laughs> I can't new beginning a new adventure awaits embrace it and live your dreams passionately see so yeah, there's definitely a new beginning on the horizon for you too we also have this card and it says balance love is not always about agreeing just for the sake of it a great relationship is one that both supports and challenges and I think that's definitely the balance it's like you both challenge each other but with that sun look we have support twice here I think that's really beautiful and on the back of the deck, we have secret admirer. Someone has deeper feelings for you than they are letting on. So yeah, maybe maybe you know of this person. Maybe you haven't met them yet. Or maybe, um, like I said, 
maybe even if you're in separation with this person, maybe y'all have never just like sat down and been like, look, I like you or like, look, I'm into you. So, um, yeah, this is really interesting, but I definitely think that this person is feeling you and wants a new beginning or a beginning in general if they haven't had it yet. But pile four, I'm going to leave this reading. Actually, no, I'm not because three cards just came out and I feel like they're for you. So the first one we have is this one. It says forgiveness. Stop focusing your energy on past events for life is too precious to waste. You create your reality by what you think, dream, and imagine. We also have this and it says criticizing one another will only lead to further unhappiness. Love and accept each other as you are and your relationship will magically transform. And then we have this card and it says only time will tell. So yeah, so I guess Spirit had a couple couple more messages, but pile four, I'm going to leave this reading here. Thank you guys so much for watching all the way through if you did. And I also want to say thank you so much to everyone who has been watching my ads. It is the easiest and simplest way to support me and my channel. And so I just wanted to say thank you so much to everyone who does that. I genuinely appreciate it. Um, if you enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you left a like. Definitely let me know down in the comments how it resonates. I would love to hear. Um... I would also love it if you haven't already and would like to, if you'd like to subscribe and click that little notification bell so that you are notified every time I upload a new reading. I would love that as well. Um, thank you guys so much for letting me read your cards. I hope you all had, have a wonderful day or night whenever it is that you're watching this and I hope you'll come back and see me again soon. Bye.